Hello everyone, thanks Ellie for that very interesting uh, talk. I'm afraid I, I don't have a presentation, so you're gonna have to just keep your eyes uh, and on me and listen to me. Um, my name's Callum Hood. I'm the head of research at an organization called the Center for Counting Digital Hate. Um, as the name suggests, we work on hate, but also on disinformation and other online harms, including harms to children. And we're focused on both the US and the UK. So we've done a range of work on harms to children, including looking at um, how social media contributes to the development of um, eating disorders, um, self-harm, um, harms that children face in VR. And then we've recently done a new report on incels, which I'm going to talk about today. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what incels are and, and why we decided to look at them. Um, I'm going to talk about what we have called the incelosphere in our report, which is a sort of broader community around incel forums. We talk about our findings about what's happening in the leading incel communities. And then I'll talk a little bit about how we might solve or, or try to close some of the pathways into incel communities and tackle the harms that they cause. So in terms of what incels are and why my organisation took an interest in them, we do lots of work on online misogyny. So we've done work on so-called pickup artists that um, damage the sort of concept of consent. Um, we've done work on red pill communities, which I'll talk about in a, a bit more in a moment, that promote misogyny. Recently did work on Andrew Tate and his sort of misogynist influencer machine that he had built for profit. And we did a lot of work on online abuse directed at public figures as well, um, including over DMs in private. We did a report on that earlier this year. Now, this, this is all connected with what is sometimes called the manosphere, which is misogynist online communities um, that don't agree on a lot. And in fact, there's lots of feuds between them, but they generally agree that women's equality has somehow come at the cost of men and that men are somehow now the oppressed minority in place of women. Um, so we were interested in cells first because they are the most extreme fringe of that manosphere community. Um, and young men can end up in this most extreme incel part of the manosphere, starting out somewhere else completely different. For example, seeing a video by Andrew Tate on TikTok. So what are incels? Well, they're involuntary celibates is the original and literal meaning. Um, back in the depths of history, uh, they were um, less extreme. The original incel communities were open to both men and women. And it was literally communities for people who couldn't form romantic and sexual relationships. And the character of those early communities was much more in the nature of a sort of support community. But in, in the last decade, what has happened is that um, those have developed into much more extreme and hateful communities. Um, first on Reddit and then moving off platform. And to, to explain a little bit about their view of the world, I'm going to contrast what is called the red pill with what is called the black pill. Now, the red pill, so named after the scene in The Matrix where Neo is forced to choose between taking the blue pill, which will keep him uh, blind to reality and safe and secure, or the red pill where he'll be woken up to the true nature of the world. Um, the idea in the manosphere is that taking the red pill is waking up to the idea that men, especially white men, are in fact the oppressed minority. Now, if you are a red pillar, you hold open the possibility that this can change, that taking the red pill could be the first step towards fixing this supposed inequality that is now visited upon men. But in the incel community, they often discuss the black pill. So the black pill takes the same starting point, this view of the world that men are actually the oppressed minority, but disagrees with red pillars in that they think there is nothing that you can do about it. And specifically, incels think that there is something wrong about them, either in the way they look or their socioeconomic status or their intelligence or their personality, that means they are just literally unable to form a sexual romantic relationship. And that society is rigged, as it were, to prevent them from taking part in relationships and playing a full part in society. That is part of the reason why these incel communities are so full of violence and rage. Because if you close off any possibility that you're going to sort of exit this state of being, all that you've got left is directing rage and violence towards society and women in particular, who they see as responsible for their, um, for their state. The second reason we're interested in incel communities is that we know that they pose a threat to both the young men who join these communities and those around them. 
There have been a number of mass shootings perpetrated by self-described incels in recent years, primarily in the US, um, the best known being Elliot Roger. Just last week, a young man from Ohio called Trez Genko pleaded guilty to plotting a mass shooting with the intention of killing thousands of women was his plan. Um, and he is um, said to be, uh, reported to be a member of incel communities and um, the members of the incel community we studied have claimed sort of ownership of him and said that he was a member of their forum. And now in the UK too, so just over a year ago, there was an incel mass shooting in Plymouth by a young man called Jake Davison. We did some research into his online presence. Um, it was very clear he was involved in incel communities. And in fact, he said that incel communities had damaged his mental health and he wished that he had never become involved in them. So this is something that has now affected us in the UK too. So we want to investigate incel communities because they're damaging for these young men and those around them. So where do incels congregate online? As I said, there were previously thriving incel communities on Reddit, but for some of the sort of content I'm about to get into, they were thrown off Reddit. So they largely subsist now off platform. They've created their own websites, like traditional web forums um, for incel communities. There are a number of these, um, but we focused on the most popular one according to publicly available metrics, how many visits they get and how many members that they have. I'm gonna call it throughout this talk the incel forum. We made a very deliberate choice in our recent report and in all our communications around it not to name the forums that I'm going to discuss so as not to drive traffic towards them and I'll follow that convention today as well. Now there's something very interesting about this incel forum. It was founded in 2017 by a guy called Diego Galante and he was assisted by an administrator known by the name Lamarcus Small. But these two guys didn't stop just by found, finding an incel forum they set up a number of other forums as well, and the topics they focus on are very interesting. One of them we called the Body Image Forum. One of them is the Unemployment Forum, and the third and final one is the Suicide Forum. So I'm just gonna explain what these are. Now, all of them except the Suicide Forum um, are, are barred to women. So they're exclusively male communities with the exception of the Suicide Forum. The Body Image Forum is the most popular of all four forums. It's about what incels sometimes call looks maxing. This is the idea that you can somehow change your looks to escape from being an incel and therefore form a sexual relationship. But this forum is full of extremely radical steps to uh, improve, supposedly improve the way that you look and thereby exit or ascend from being an incel. The methods um, include surgery, they include completely unproven methods to change the structure of your face, such as mewing. I even met a documentary maker last week who was looking at this forum, who said there's a, a trend towards bone smashing, which is to actually strike the bones of your own face in an attempt to uh, bring about a gradual change in the, in the structure of your jaw, for example. Another popular activity on here is that members will rate each other. Um, it's, uh, and so you, you'll go into the forum and you'll, you're asked to be rated, you'll be given a numerical rating on your looks and people will tell you how sort of bad the situation is for you. And it's very clear in some cases that members of this forum are sort of suffering from some form of body dysmorphia, that they become extremely anxious and depressed about the way that they look. And we found that there's significant crossover between this forum's membership and the incel forum that was the centre of our study. Briefly mentioned the unemployment forum, this is the smallest of them. It's focused on young men not in education or employment. It's ostensibly a support forum, but it contains much of the same ideology as the incel forum, and again, has a crossover in membership. And then finally, the suicide forum is perhaps the most concerning of these satellite forums. It's unique in being open to women, but this is not a support forum. Um, there was a New York Times investigation in December 2021, very detailed. Um, it showed how the forum contains detailed instructions on how young people can kill themselves and how often users who join this forum are encouraged to kill themselves. It's been linked to the deaths of dozens of young people in the US. So what have we got when we look at this in the round? We've got four websites founded by the same two people, starting with the incel site, which contain much of the same ideology. And these satellite forums appear to be feeders into that core incel forum. So this is what we've dubbed the incelosphere, that there's elements of incel ideology in all of these satellite forums, and that these are some of the major pathways that young men enter the incelosphere and enter incel communities and become active participants. So I'm gonna talk now a little bit about some of our findings 
with the, uh, respect to the incel forum in particular. Just to explain briefly how we did it, um, we've got a very talented uh, team at CCDH now. We, could, we scraped 1.2 million posts from the main uh, discussion forum of the incel forum. Um, those are that's every post in that sub forum uh, placed since January 2021. So it's a very comprehensive look at it over the last year and a half. And I think we've got four main sets of findings. I'll talk briefly about what discussions are like on there, what the, what the sort of structure of it is in terms of its membership, how they have footholds on mainstream platforms, how they appear to be growing in extremism, and then how children appear to be engaged in this community as well. So first of all, what, what's this forum like? Well, the, the most, one of the most remarkable and basic things about it is that it's open. Anybody in this room could go and visit the site and view virtually all posts on there. And when you hear about what the content of those posts is, you might find that slightly surprising, but that's precisely because they want young men to be able to encounter this forum, view its content, and become active participants. Second, it's full of pretty bewildering language if you've never seen this stuff before. Um, much of it is designed to dehumanise women who are frequently referred to as foids, which is short for fe female humanoids, so they're not even sort of recognised as human. There's lots of language dedicated to different perceived types of incel. For example, a short cell is someone who believes their height prevents them from forming sexual relationships. Lots of coded references to violence. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of references to the incel mass shooter, Elliot Roger. And there's often an ironic stance towards the content of these posts to try and avoid outright incitement or violence or statements of intent that could get them in trouble with security services. For example, and this is often very crude and, and deliberately so and, and is regarded as a source of humour. So they will add, for example, the phrase in a video game towards an otherwise straightforward statement of intent towards violence. This all contributes to a sort of insider culture on the incel forum. Um, it makes it attractive to young men that want to feel a sense of community and belonging and be able to express quite dark ideas in a sort of coded way, a safe, in, a, in a safe place. Now our data reveals that the forum consists of a very small number of active members with interest from a much wider audience of visiting users. So there are 2.6 million visits a month to the forum. But then there's just 17,000 total members of whom only 4,000 actually made a post in the time that we actually conducted our study. And even then, 75% of the posts um, are, are from just 10% of the active user base, 400 users. <laughs> So it's just 400 users are responsible for the bulk of posts on there. So it's all directed towards bringing people in and making them very extremely engaged. As you'll hear later in my talk, there are young people on this forum that, according to statistics available on the forum, spend up to 10 hours a day on there. And the UK is an important market for this forum. So it is a predominantly US phenomenon, with 44% of all visits being, to, uh, being from US visitors. Um, but the UK accounts for 7.5% of visits and appears to um, account for a similar proportion of members as well. So this is, we are in second place in terms of um, countries that supply visits to these communities. It's important to note that incels have footholds on mainstream platforms as well. So we did an analysis of all the links contained in posts on the incel forum. Um, and what we found is that they most frequently link to just YouTube. And there are actually U uh, incel YouTube channels, um, which have at, uh, as of this week, have about 150,000 50, subscribers and uh, over 24 million views on their videos. So this is, again, another mainstream route into incel communities. And what we also found is that these incelosphere forums rank very, very high on Google if you search for terms associated with concerns about body image, if you search for incel terminology. And so there's a very clear pathway from encountering this stuff, either um, you know, terminology through a... Manosphere influencer like Andrew Tate or seeing an incel YouTube channel, um, which are actually surprisingly popular. And then you only need to go and search for some of these terms and you'll quickly encounter the sort of incel communities that I, um, we studied in our report. That alarmingly, incel communities appear to be becoming more extreme. So if you're familiar with them, um, it would be no surprise to you that over a fifth of posts in the forum feature some kind of misogynist, racist, anti-Semitic or anti-LGBTQ language, and 16% contain misogynistic slurs, which of course is their main focus. But you might not know that forum members post about rape every 29 minutes. 
examinations of discussions about rape show that users who express a view, 89% uh, of them think rape is legitimate. Posts mentioning incel mass murders increased 59% between 2021 and 2022. And over a quarter of incel forum users have posted paedophilia keywords. Discussions of paedophilia again show that users who express a view, 53% of them think child abuse is legitimate. And the incel forums rules were even changed in March 2022 to accommodate uh, this fact. So the rules changed from do not sexualise minors in any way, shape or form to do not sexualise prepubescent minors in any way, shape or form. And this is common. I mean, after the publication of the report, I, I, I read a discussion on there all about, um, you know, whether minors are able to become pregnant and what that means for um, consent of, of children. So child abuse, you know, it, it, is a common, it is a common topic on there. And there are minors engaged in this incel community. So we, we found a few case studies of this. Now, the minimum age is supposed to be 15. So users don't, as a rule, admit to being younger than the minimum age that they're supposed to be allowed by the administrators of this site onto the forum. Um, but we did find some who expressed being age 15, 17. And there's one in particular I want to talk about. We'll call him Carl. Carl is a student. He said that he had been referred to the UK's anti-extremism prevent programme in school because he'd brought a knife into class. He had then turned to the community of the incel forum to ask for advice on, um, on, bringing, uh, on, on hiding his internet activity from his teachers, parents and um, security services and was given that advice. And he was even advised by other users to stop taking psychiatric med medicine, which they refer to as Jew pills. There's a, there's a huge streak of anti-Semitism running through the forum, and one of the themes of which is that psychiatric medicine is a sort of Jewish conspiracy to keep men docile. So what can we do about this? Well, what, one of the main things we've uh, said, and it's directed at the mainstream platforms, is that they can play a role in closing pathways into the incelosphere. We've asked YouTube to deplatform and sell YouTube channels that have this enormous reach with 24 million views on their videos. And we said that Google must downrank in Cellosphere sites in search results because it's just far too easy for young men with these concerns to encounter the worst help imaginable in the form of these sites about body image or the, the main incel community. We also think the, you know, in, in the longer term, legislation like the online safety bill can help. What we think we found in terms of this Incelosphere community, which has been investigated in part before, but we, we think hasn't been laid out so clearly as, as in our report recently, um, is that there are these clear pathways, there are these, there are these clear concerns that young men bring into Incelosphere communities. And they're already topics that we know social media plays a role in causing these harms. So for example, on body image, we know that the algorithm on, on Instagram and on TikTok gives young people extreme body image concerns. We know that it can be damaging to mental health and if you express an interest in mental health content, you can find more and more and more on social media platforms. So we think that by um, encouraging platforms to be safe by design, especially for children, you can ease some of these pressures um, that drive young men into the incel communities. Um, but we really, want the, we really want the online safety bill to address harms to adults as well as children. Um, you know, we think that uh, we agree with other organisations in this space that you really need to try and make it safe for everyone. It's not possible to make a sort of walled garden on the internet that is safe for children and children alone. And you can see in our own research, you know, there's a lot of young adults on there as well as children. Um, and this is a broader concern, you know, I mean, if someone goes to university and they have mental health concerns and they feel very isolated, why don't they need the sort of protections that children just a couple of years younger might get um, under that side of the legislation. So this is a complex problem, but we think there, and, and it, partly because much of this takes place off platform, off of the mainstream platforms. But mainstream platforms and the government can have a role to play in reducing some of the drivers and the pathways into these communities. Thank you very much, and I look forward to any questions in a moment.